Okay. It didn't tell me what it's recording. It is recording. <clears throat> yeah, it gave us a warning. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, there's a spider on me. Oh, oh no. I just got rid of a stink bug. <laughs> there's another one right there. I think the storm drove them in. We got stink bugs and spiders. No, no. Is Noel still in charge of administering this? Uh, we're, this uh, we're co we're, we're So we're she's she's doing a virtual as well as a literal web broadcast. This case yeah. with the spider. There we okay. go. She's going into the local wide web. <laughs> the not so world wide web. Where is our esteemed peer peer reviewer? Is he not going to be on with any historical stuff tonight? No, he he had a personal matter today. Uh, he will not be here. That's why that's not acceptable. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it works out. Whatever it does. <clears throat> We have somebody waiting to get in. So I don't know who that might be. We'll, we'll let him in, see what happens. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. This is Jeff Krebs from Campanelli. Wonderful. <coughs> we were wondering if you would make it. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. Oh, well, technology is wanting to fail me. I, I, I lost all cell reception in Abington, so I had to run back to Braintree. Well, I don't know that anyone else from your team is on. That's okay. I can I can talk on our behalf. Okay. My uh, engineer is having, having similar problems. He's down without any power down the cave. Oh, yeah, that's what we were afraid of. We, we, were, we were just discussing that. All right, well, um, let me proceed here. Um, it being the evening of Wednesday, October 27th, and a quorum being present, I'll call the meeting of the Conservation Commission to order, person with the Governor Baker's signing of Senate Bill 2475, an act related to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will meet utilizing the Zoom online option. Instructions and invitations are available at the town website www.bellingmma.org. And moving forward in the meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to withhold asset access to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and respectfully request such access. So we will proceed uh, with the first public hearing. Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing in accordance with the Mass Force Protection Act, General Law Chapter, General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, Protection Bylaw, and the Notice of Intent for the Proposed Roadway Mitigation along site frontage entrances to Curtis Apartments as required by Mass DOT, including installation of additional catch basins connecting to the existing system at the east legally end of the site and within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. The site is located at Sessor's Map 51, parcels 4, 4A, 4B, 6, and 8 at 161, 163, and 167 Mechanic Street, Bellingham. Keith Lincoln, Chapel Engineering, Boston Post Road, Marlborough has submitted the filing on behalf of Russell Dean, Campanelli, uh, Brain Free Mass. Continuations will be held on the evening, Wednesday, October 27th at 7. <coughs> Okay, I need to. All right. So we, we got the final um, peer review response from BSC uh, on the project. And it appears from their perspective that everything is in order. With, with a couple minor exceptions. Yeah, I, I read through the letter when I got it uh, yesterday, and uh, I think that it looked to, to be the same to me, that everything was in order. Yeah, we need the O&M plan. Oh, yes. Uh, and I, I 
I requested my engineer to get that over there before this meeting, but he was having technical difficulties down the case. Of course. We get it. We understand. So the own the own implant absolutely will be submitted before the end of this week. Okay. I thought he had sent, when when we sent in our our comments our responses to you, to the comments. I thought he had sent that in at the same time he was supposed to. Okay. What were you going to say? Oh, I, I just wanted to mention to you, Jeff, that our, our peer reviewer, Frank, is unable to attend the meeting this evening. Um, he had some personal things going on. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay. So um, I have a couple observations. The first observation is that um, uh, your response to the basin that's already been constructed is across the street is that it couldn't be utilized because it was undersized and that in order to enlarge it, it would require um, seeking uh, an expansion of the easement and permission from the property owner. Um, so did you do that? So uh, uh, Rusty, on a, a partner from our company, I think has been in, in talks with them, with, uh, with Lincoln. Um, and I don't think that any deal was able to be reached with Lincoln, but I was not personally a direct party to that conversation. Because I know when we were out in the field, that was our primary concern uh, was, you know, looking for water quality improvements. Uh, it's important for the town's MS4. That was the first observation. Uh, the second observation is that um, there are three design points and they're all relatively close together uh, on the south uh, east portion of the project site and you know when we were out there doing our site review we thought geez this is an ideal location for a small structure and an overflow for this could at the very least be channeled to the existing wetland area and we never really heard very much on that um so, I'm not quite sure I exactly follow, follow exactly. Could you restate state that, Cliff? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you've got three design points mm -hmm. for the catchment area, and they all are very close to um, the southeast corner of the project site, you know, where the existing driveway is. Yep. And since there's not going to be a driveway there, when we were out in the field, we said this is an ideal spot for a small basin. And the overflow could be sent across the road like you're doing now. You're, you're, so you're referring to the area where we have our construction trailer parked? That road? In that, that, area, that yes. Yep, that, yep. that is that is not actually part of our the parcel of this of the of our project at all. We don't own that parcel at all. Okay. Well, the reason the reason we're not going to go to the map for that is because you have substantially reduced existing drainage, and so by the reduction of post-construction volume um, and the fact that although MassDOT was not happy about it, they agreed um, that hoods would be, that they would work with the commission to have hoods installed. Uh, I think that that'll probably um, adequately address those two concerns. It's not ideal, but we we tried to get them to to be open to a. We had an informal conversation on a on a phone chat with them to try to get them to be accepting of a water water quality unit or a storm scepter. Right, but that didn't go anywhere. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. All right, uh, I believe the comments were submitted to the commission, Frank's comments were submitted. I know it was kind of last minute. Um, we've been anticipating them, but based on the fact that he really had no outstanding issues, um, I felt it was important for us to mention our concerns. <clears throat> um, does the commission have any other questions or comments? Um, Cliff, I had one. Uh... I'm trying to find the section, <laughs> just lost the document I had a minute ago open, um, where I think Frank had commented 
it was most of the way through the report, I think, or his comments section, that the flow overall was being increased to the areas down on the south side and then funneled under the road and over into the wetlands area. And that the, it was reasonable to assume the overall volume of water was going through there was going to be somewhat increased. And then in a second comment, a little further on, I think, they talked about the, um, the 15 inch pipe under the road and that it couldn't handle more than the current volume. And then there was a question about, well, we're in a heavy rainstorm he observed, or I assume he observed, says, um, when observed in a heavy rainstorm, there was, and the 15 inch pipe wasn't being utilized, they, he was wondering where the water that was coming in there was coming from, I guess. Was any of that resolved, do we know? Well, what happened was that that's the basin that was constructed for the other side of the street. And that's oh, the, the development side or the Lincoln side? The Lincoln side. Lincoln side. Yeah, it's so, okay. All right. Yeah. So that's the basin that was constructed by Lincoln. And that's the basin that, you know, that this developer can't tie into because they can't expand it. Right. And, and the volume would be overmatched. Right. The capacity so, would be overmatched by the new volume. So the alternatives were to expand the basin if we get permission into Lincoln's property, but that doesn't sound like that's happening. So what are the other options then for the stuff all goes down to the south side of the bottom of the hill there and then wants to go under the road, and but is not going to be permitted to? It's going to... I, well, we, I still don't... Chris, when we were out in the field, we talked about trying to have another basin constructed right down where the construction trailer is. Right. That's, it's the low points, the design point. We figured that would be ideal, but they they do not have control of that property. Right. So <laughs> what's gonna happen? Well, we'll let Jeff talk. So the water, so right now the, where the design goes, so like currently without any of our design, the there's a catch basin, it comes, the, ro the water comes down the road to a catch basin uh, that's approximately maybe a little further up the road um, heading towards the new intersection by Lincoln Properties than where the catch base or where the new four bay is that, that Lincoln Properties. It goes to a structure that's on that parcel that, that, um, that Cliff was just referring to, and then it cuts under the street and it, and it has a direct discharge into wetlands. And it's had that condition for, I don't know, de decades to my, to my knowledge. So now, so there's one structure there. We're now adding in uh, a number of new structures that all have deep sumps. Additionally, those structures, when they connect into the trunk, the trunk line, there's a deep sump manhole as well. So we're adding in a whole new level of, uh, we're adding in uh, greatly improving the situation that's there. Additionally, when we designed our parcel, which we did under a separate application, um, we designed it to, so that all of the infiltration, uh, so that we infiltrate everything on site. We have no offsite discharge. Uh, so we have two infil two large uh, Coltec systems going in that site, and we have uh, an open detention pond on the site as well. All of those systems are uphill from this, so they would, and we couldn't intermingle them anyway because you can't intermingle from with DOT with our personal stuff, our personal uh, drainage on site. Um, that being said, the front of the property could not have received any four bays because of during the comprehensive permit process, we had to add in a multi-use shared path that cuts through any option to have any 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 four bay anywhere else. Uh, and not only that, it's also, up, again, all those areas are still uphill of where the drainage is all all going. So it cuts, it cuts down the hill, it goes uh, into catch basins along the way, mitigating, so it's not all, all the water's not going to that one catch basin, overloading it in a severe weather storm, it's getting truncated down by, four, uh, I think it's four catch basins total now. Um, and then they have all those deep, they have doubled up deep sum structures. The sums are just for, for water quality though, correct? Okay, yeah. so the water coming down them is gonna be in better shape than it was before. I agree in theory with that, but the overall volume of water, whether it gets caught in one catch basin, two, three, or four, especially when you talk about a 10 foot wide impervious path that's going the whole length of the front of the property, is that inset with- That well, path, that, that path, the drainage yeah. of that consumed on my development. It, it does not go to the roadway. It and doesn't. so we, okay. we greatly have reduced. So if you go to, what comment is it from? He's got, he's got a so, chart there. It has a, there's a table, it's on page four and it says peak flows and volumes uh, pre and post. 
So if you look at it, we've cut the flow to this system, to that pipe that has a direct discharge into a, it's on, uh, to a wetland resource area, I believe, that it's, we've cut it almost uh, in, 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 depending on the storm, more than half. Right. So we've reduced the flow and we've added additional treatment to it. The multi-use path that's 10 feet wide, I'm picturing the hill going down there. Is that gonna be right from the edge of the road in basically a sidewalk and or paved area that is allowing bikers and walkers, when it says multi-use, I'm picturing bikers, walkers, everything but a horse probably. Yep. And ATVs, of course, plenty of those. Um, the, uh, so if it's right adjacent to the road in 10 feet, that's where the path is gonna be, this multi-use path, all the way down from the top of the hill down. What does it do at the bottom? just stops or does it go back up the other side again on the south side to that person? I'd have to, look that to see exactly where 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 exactly you're you're referring to. Let me see if I can let me see if I can pull up a plan since I'm at my uh I'm at the mothership. Mike, did you see the? Uh, did you see the table? I'm trying to get the document up again. It, it dropped off, and I think I'm going to go back in through the uh, the uh, Dropbox. Hang on a second. I, I think uh, Amy put in the Dropbox before. Uh, right. Uh, am I able to share my screen? Yes. Oh, no, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. I see, uh, I do see a table uh, approved pond. Uh, uh, this looks like page six of eight. Increased drainage. No, page four of oh. October 25th letter. Oh, the October 25th letter. No, this is the October 27th one that was attached. Uh, no, this is the October 25th letter, supplemental, sorry. Um, one, two, three, four, okay. I'll oh, comment G4. Uh, they're not numbered the same way. Five of eight. Where they're sitting, the Dropbox is a little different. It's got the two 1025 and 100 year storm. Mm -hmm. Two 1025, 100 year. No, the two tables I'm working You've seen at. You've it by eight or nine times. Hmm. Substantial reduction in flow. See, it, during the notice of intent, the application stated that uh, much of the flow that was coming off the road was accommodated in the uh, Curtis Apartments, but we wanted that to be substantiated, uh, and and that's what they've done. Right. Well, the, the uh, table that I'm looking at that was highlighted by somebody, I'm not sure whether it was Frank or somebody else, says existing 15-inch pipe exceeds its capacity when additional flow is added. Is that the table you're referring to with the storms? 10-year, um, I see design period storm 10-year. I think it's 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 comment, it's at the bottom, towards the bottom of comment G1. So it's right, the, there's a bold area right above comment G2. Uh, okay, I'm going to get G4. Hang on a second. G1. Okay, I've got it. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's more of a map than a spread. I thought someone was saying there was a table. I've seen G1 comment is the table with the multicolored outlines of the piping and or. No. Well, we're, we're looking at the table that's within the, the body of the letter. It's, it's in the peer review letter. Of October 25th. I'm looking at the supplemental peer review that's attached in the, the PDF document that's in the Dropbox. Is that not the right document? What is the date on your document? 10-25-21. Supplemental peer review, Route 140 improvements. Um, I just double clicked on, let me see if opening it up that way. No, but signed off by Frank. That might be a different document. I think that might be for the next hearing. Uh, okay, well, no, I just double clicked on that other one. So the, yeah, right, the Dropbox one might be the other one. Yeah, no, okay, now I found page, uh, yeah, comments on G1, peak flows, two year, 10 year, 25 year, 100 year. That's the one. Okay, okay, peak post. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I read this part of it and what I had. No, that was before that that I was questioning the comment by Frank. Um, no, it was after that. Uh, based on the storm calculations. 
Okay, yeah, comment G3 talks about the 12, it was 12 inch, not 15 inch range pipe, seems reasonable to expect to overflow. And then uh, his comment on page seven says, that said, having observed this basin during heavy rain with no inflow from the 15 inch pipe, the question arises as to what drainage area is contributing flow into this basin. Um, but it's not part of the project on the other side of the road. I assume this is this is the Lincoln side basin. I don't think you could be referring to another one, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so um, the one basin, right? So, if there was flow coming and it was there, there was a heavy rain, but there was no inflow coming from the fifteen-inch pipe. But that that basin and that system, the, all, all the structures on the north side of the road, mm -hmm. are outside of the, my my application, my purview, and my control. Right. So I'm trying to look back further and see where okay. the 15 inch just charge to the pipe. The 15 inch pipe they talking about as opposed to the 12 inch under the road. It's 12 inch under the road. The 15 inch discharge system of the pipe that he's referring to on page seven is the one on the north side feeding down into the basin from the Lincoln side properties development on that side of the road. The, the 15 inch pipe, yes, it comes down from the north side coal, um, catch basins and then feeds into okay. uh, a uh, a head wall with a with a gabion around okay. it, and okay. then there's a four minute. Right, I remember walking around in there. Okay, so that was the 15 inch versus the 12 inch that goes under the road from your side of the road to right. the, the 12 inch is the one that is the direct discharge. Okay, and you you feel that, and it seems like Frank was agreeing that with the recrunching of the numbers and information you now provided, that the overall volume decreased up because you're taking everything that was on your property is not gonna go down into that system that even though the pipe may be a capacity at times now, it's not gonna be substantially overloaded because you've decreased the overall flow of water down the hill, including that impervious paved area, 10 foot wide that runs down the hill. Exactly, well stated, that's exactly correct. Okay, I just make sure I was, I was Mulling it through, I figured, of course, Frank's not here, but that he was going to basically run through that same thing. I just want to make sure it was set in my mind the same way. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with comments. Hey, the other comment I'm going to have is that um, we are, it's a direct discharge into a wetland, but um, DOT was utilizing what we fondly call country drainage there. Uh, there was never any kind of an easement. They just directly discharged um, all the drainage from the roadway to that one point. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if over the last 30 years, it didn't create the weapon. Not a Bellingham native, so I can't speak to that. <laughs> no, neither am I, but we've been here for a long time. And it's always been there. So if the I last 30 years, I bike by it every day, every couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jeff, um, obviously, um, uh, this may be a silly question, but when we go, when you go through the construction phase of this, everything's all going to be cleaned out, correct? Yeah, we have to. We we have to per our mass DOT uh, permit. We after we complete construction and after they they have to inspect it after we've completed construction and cleaned it. So you'll evaluate the integrity of that twelve inch pipe. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what kind of condition that's in, do you? Is that I do not. Is it I do not at this time. Is it CMP or is it uh, is it uh, corrug um, corrugated metal? Do we even know? I'm not 100% certain. I'd have to go back to, to, to I know Bowler investigated it, my, the civil engineer for the, um, for the development a long time ago, and I'd have to see if I could find it in any of their notes on it. But we'll make sure that that's in the conditions. Okay. Yeah, that should probably be Cameron. It's a very old pipe, so I, I, I wouldn't see any objection to that. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's corrugated metal, it's probably going to need to be replaced. But, but we'll, we'll address that in the order. It's definitely still flowing. I've gone over there when, during a, a storm event. I've seen water going down that pipe. Can't speak about the 15-inch pipe, but I know that the 12-inch one has had water coming out of it. So, um, any other questions? All right, here's what I propose. Um, 
what I'd like to do is continue this to our next meeting, which is November 10th. And what we'll do is we'll develop the order of conditions and distribute it for comment. And if there's no comment, then at our next meeting, we'll, um, we'll close uh, an issue. But before we, before we're able to do that, of course, we'll need the O&M thing. Yep, I will, I will have it to you before the end of this week. Perfect. All right, then uh, I will entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of November 10th uh, at 7.30, at which time we will have an order of conditions prepared for review. And uh, if everything's good, we'll close and sign. I'll move. Second. Okay, Brian Noel. Um, discussion. Uh, again, we've been advised to poll the members. So I'm going to go by my screen. So it'll be Noel. Aye. Mr. Stanley. Aye. Mr. O'Haran. Aye, aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Ms. Barton. Aye. Hey, that's a unanimous vote. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Good night. You too. Stay safe, everyone. Okay, uh, we'll proceed to our next uh, hearing. Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing, a continuation of a public hearing for the South Main Street, Douglas Drive to Mechanic Street, roadway widening and drainage improvements. Um, as we agreed in our last hearing um, an order of conditions was prepared and distributed we received no comments if there are no further comments um, i'll entertain a motion to close this hearing and sign and issue the order of conditions so moved neil second michael discussion all in favor Aye. Aye. You want to poll again or not? I probably should yeah. uh, to be consistent. We'll go backwards this time. So Ariane. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Michael. Aye. Neil. Aye. Well. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Now, um, I know our administrator has sent out a plea. Once again, we have numerous permits and uh, vouchers to sign. So before we get to the next one, which will also require signatures, what, what looks good for, for getting the signatures completed? What, what do we have? We've been, we've, last time around we did pretty well. I'm available tomorrow. Does that work for you, Ann? Yes. Okay. See you in the morning. Thank you. I, I should be too. Thank you. Excellent. I think Noelle has already responded. And she said she could come. She should. Monday. She could come on Monday. I can do Monday afternoon or tomorrow afternoon around five o'clock. We have something at five. Yeah, I have a conflict at five, but um, all right. I'll let you know on. Monday. I'll let you know about Monday. Monday sure. at five. Yes. Yeah. Where is anyone available to do it on Saturday? Maybe yeah. Neil can do it on Saturday. Okay, that's good. Saturday morning. Saturday morning at eight thirty. Is that good? Okay. All right. And I don't know if Ariane has lunchtime. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I can do tomorrow, but I might be able to do Friday. 
Awesome. Okay, well, maybe you can just reach out and let me know. That would be awesome. Okay. Sounds good. All right, thank, thank you, you, everybody. I serve at the administrator's pleasure, so <laughs> I can sign any time. <clears throat> Excellent. So our next hearing This is for the South Main Street um, traffic improvements. <clears throat> the Millennium Conservation Commission will hold public hearing in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act. Chapter 131, Section 40, on the Millennium Wetlands Protection Bylaw and the notice of intent for the proposed expansion of existing pavement and installation of a retaining wall to make South Main Street wider, the installation of a five foot sidewalk, an associated site work and a utility adjustments located within a hundred foot buffer zone, the bordering vegetative wetlands and proposed alteration of 10 feet of bordering vegetative wetlands located at the intersection of South Main Street and Center Street and the roadway rights of way. Uh, Gary and Helen, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of South Center Realty, Corey Drive, Milford, Continuation will be held on the evening of Wednesday, October 27th at 7.35. The applicant has requested a continuation. <coughs> so um, at the applicant's request, uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of November 10th at 7.45. So moved. Well. Second. All right. Okay. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we'll aye. Poll. We'll poll. Although I heard everybody say aye. It's okay. Just All right. Noel? Aye. Deal? Aye. Michael? Once again, aye. Brian? Ariane? Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next hearing, Delaware Conservation Commission. We'll hold a public hearing in accordance with the Wellness Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Bellin and Wellness Protection Bylaw, and the Notice of Intent for the Proposed Septic System Repair, located within a 100 foot buffer zone of the Board of Vegetative Wetlands, Assessors Map 90, Lot 146, 31 Archer Street, Bellingham. Keegan, Allen Engineering, Oakdale, Mass, has submitted the filing on behalf of Peter Lemon, 31 Archer Street, Bellingham. The continuations will be held on the evening of Wednesday, October 27th at 7.35. Hi, good evening. Karen Keegan from Allen Engineering. Hello. Um, we discussed at our last meeting, this is again is a septic repair on um, Archer Street. Uh, he uh, needs to repair his, his cesspool has to be replaced and we're putting in a new septic system. Again, uh, any disturbance is outside of the 70 foot um, area of the wetlands. At our last meeting, we discussed uh, putting um, um, four, four inch markers along the wetland line with uh, conservation placards on them. I've put those on the plan. They are located on the revised plan. There are four of them. I was also asked to locate uh, the brush piles and whatever else needs to be taken out of the wetlands. I've done that. Um, there's a PVC fence on the left-hand side of the property. There's two brush piles on, in the back. Two of them are outside the area, but obviously they must be the homeowners. Um, and there's a third one on the other person's property. I don't know whose it is, so I did not show it on the plan because it's not on our property. Okay. Um, it's on the neighbors next door. Um, is, was there any other questions with the commission? No, the uh, order 
the order has been drafted and submitted for uh, comment. And we have had no comments back, so I think we're ready to go. Awesome, that's great. Uh, and any other questions from the commission? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing and sign an issue of the prepared order of conditions. Moved. Deal. Second. Well, okay. If there's no further discussion, um, uh, Ariane. Yeah. Brian. Aye. Michael. Aye. Deal. Aye. And Noel. Aye. Hey, by your name. Oh, I thought oh. you were asking me a question. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's unanimous vote. Um, the order goes. Okay, so yes, I wanted to just tell you, Karen, that the homeowner, Peter Lemon, reached out to me and he mm -hmm. asked if I would send him the original order. He would take care of the recording. That's fine with me. Okay, all right. So that'll be, I told him uh, probably be released by the beginning of next week. And I'm gonna send That's it right up, to, right up to his home in Maine. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, and believe it or not, <laughs> The final hearing of the evening. Millennium Conservation Commission will hold uh, public hearings in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Journal Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Millennium Wetlands Protection Bylaw, on the notice of intent for the proposed construction of a new single family dwelling in the same footprint as a recently fire destroyed dwelling, including proposed select tree removal and trimming of limbs located within a 100 foot buffer zone to Box Pond. At assessors map 43 parcel 28, lot 663, Box Pond Drive. Bellingham, Mark Bergeron, Blackstone Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of Michael Savard, uh, Lakeview Construction and Remodeling, uh, Bellingham Road, Blackstone. The continuations will be held uh, via the online Zoom option on Wednesday, October 27th uh, at 7.40. Okay. Once again, um, another order. This order was distributed for review and comment. Can we just go over the but, changes? Yeah, let's go over it. Uh, Mark is here. So if you want to just highlight the changes. Great. Uh, good evening, everybody. Mark Bergeron. Um, this project, uh, just real quickly to recap, is for the the construction of a single family home on the existing uh, footprint of the previously existing home, which had, had burned, uh, unfortunately had a fire. Um, I do have an updated, we, last time we were in, we didn't have a DEP file number. Um, all of the proposed activities are within the buffer zone and existing previously developed lawn areas. Um, last time we were in, the commission asked if we could plant some bushes or shrubs on one corner of the uh, property abutting the, uh, the pond itself. Um, we've added that to the site plan. We've added the silt fence uh, detail and the silt fence is actually in on the site now and DEP did provide a file number requested that we provide an updated plan showing the silt fence and its detail which we, we have done. Uh, I can share my screen and quickly show the board the, the, the updated site plan if, if you want me to. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the updated site plan showing the existing house here that was to be raised, the proposed house, the deck, the silk fence out the back, and this is the location of some trees that are going to be removed, some pine trees replaced with blueberries, and this is the erosion control fence in detail, uh, with the detail here. This is this is on Box Pond, correct? 
Mm -hmm. I just noticed it says Charles River on the plane. I was kind of wondering if you moved the property, I was going to ask you about that. It's a little thing, but as I was, the Charles River feeds through the box pond and is a tributary. Uh, as I was talking, I just noticed that um, I Mike Savard's on as well. I actually don't think this is the final plan because there was a question on the revision date the last time it got sent in. So uh, I, I don't know what the final plan looks like, but we, we can we can get that adjusted and sent back over. Well, it is. Pond is the Charles River. I is it? The problem, the problem that the issue that's raised here is if it is the Charles River um, uh, and it's part of the river, then it has the riverfront resource area. If it's Box Pond, which is a resource area of the Charles River, then it only has, it's an impoundment, so it only has the 100 foot buffer zone. I see what you're saying. I did not catch that. Um, I caught a lot of other things, but I didn't catch that one. Well, I, I would argue that it's a pond, an impoundment has the 100 foot buffer zone, and we can, we can re relabel that as Box Pond, to be clear. That does up the order. Um, that devalue their property at all being on a pond instead of a river or it's pretty much the same <laughs> just kidding real estate value <clears throat> and we just request that you know the commission could still consider issuing the order that's been prepared with one additional condition that we just update the plan We don't usually close hearings until we have everything. I worked really hard to try to get this right. <laughs> is Mike around tonight? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think Claire, I'll let Mike uh, kind of give a little bit more detail, but I mean, with, with winter closing in, he's up against you know the construction window here and the, and the weather. So, you know, I, I understand that. I mean, it doesn't really, it's not gonna materially change anything. I think we all understand it. it is a pond. The label on the label on the plan set doesn't change how the work's going to be done or, or anything to that effect. Let me ask you something, Mark. When can you get that revised plan to us with a different revision date? Tomorrow. Okay, that's that would be good. And and I would greatly appreciate for you guys to consider uh, 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 voting on this tonight, this evening. Uh, we like Mark mentioned, um, we have had some challenges and. Um, the engineering nowadays is is uh, it's it's just not it's just not easy. Nobody's job's easy. Um, so I would appreciate anything you guys could do for us. Thank Mike, you. you worked, Mike, you've worked very diligently with me, and I appreciate that. Um, in I'm trying. To, <laughs> in addition to the two site, the, the, the two paper plans, I will need a, a PDF. Please yep. make sure they change the revision date so there's no. I, I will do it. I will get there tomorrow in person and uh, for sure. Okay, because, get it done. because a portion of the order is going to have to be changed because the document will be slightly different. So, all right. Um, Understood. What does the uh, commission think about that? It's okay. Is that going to? change uh when we sign it it will change when we sign it yes so me and mike was scheduled for tomorrow yes i should be able to get this done in the morning um just to alleviate any kind of um aggravation for the board members to sign anything yeah you know what? i can get on early yeah i think i think it'll be okay brian uh, because that's a different page of the document. So okay. I don't think that's going to be a problem. All right. And believe me, I'll make sure that it's correct. Just want to make sure. Thank you for raising that point. If we need to give them more time, we could just sign really slowly in the morning when we get there. <laughs> Drag it out for a few hours. <laughs> Can we vote with a condition that, like, um, sign slowly? <laughs> we get the plan? Absolutely. Yes. Or, like, vote on it with a condition that we receive the plan by. Next date. Mm -hmm. okay. can do that. Um, so here's what I'll do. Um, I'll entertain a motion um, to sign but not issue the prepared order until we have received the revised plan. 
So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Ariane. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, Brian. Aye. Aye. Deal. Aye. In the well. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. <laughs> Okay. Here. One thing I'd like to just mention, um, Ian, do you, do you recall the original plan that you and I spoke of, um, the as built for the property? Yes. That that does uh, say box pond on it, so I think I think we're on the uh, the the uppity up with that. So I'll take care of this first thing in the morning, and um, I, I really appreciate you guys helping us out here. Yeah. yeah, and I think that this is the plan. This plan will be the, the primary plan um, because DEP had some questions on that other one anyway. So um, okay. this is going to have all of the revisions on it in the revised date. So um, super. we'll take care of that. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> take care, Mark. Thank you. Good night. See you later. Have a good night, everybody. Okay. No, we can't go yet. We can't go just yet. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> We're getting there. Um, Minutes. The night before Thanksgiving. Went all through the house. We would like to take that one off. Actually, I don't even have that scheduled. <laughs> but we <we're> try. <laughs> we're trying to make it um, formal. I think. So would anyone like uh, to make a motion to cancel the meeting of the night before Thanksgiving, November 24th? Oh, I don't know. I love the idea of the evening then. Yeah, I'll make a motion to cancel the meeting of November 24th in anticipation of celebrating that wonderful holiday <laughs> where we stuck food in our faces until we're sick. So moved. <laughs> How about we just have a how about we have a short meeting and go to Mog Lockner's after? <laughs> <laughs> Hang out in the parking lot, look at the like the uh, good old days. Like the good old days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'll second it. All right. So we won't do roll call. All in favor? All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, that's a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. Um want to remind those of you who uh, are going or who are here that the fall town meeting is November 17th. <clears throat> what time does it start, 6.30? No, 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Yep. yep. And it's not on a meeting night, which is a miracle. <laughs> and so now we have minutes. I think we have, uh, there seemed to be some confusion about whether or not the minutes for August 25th had been sent out. And Mike, you, they were, have. Correct. Yeah. you, were, you were correct. You, I did not send them. So I sent them the next day. So you yeah. should have them now. I'm gonna be driving by the way. And I, my phone like staying on my car isn't working for whatever reason, probably because I started the meeting before I got in the car. So I'm just gonna leave myself on, on mute. And hopefully I don't have any road rage. Okay. <laughs> Want to start with August 25th? Uh, I only had one question. Page one, what is stream stat mapping software? Is that actually a real thing? Or I there is. Don't... Okay. So it's all one word stream stat. I just, I, I assume yeah. it maps, maps out where streams are. And I remember that part of the presentation where they talked about how it goes over the board in Rhode Island. Okay. I just, just caught my eye. I was like, oh, is that a real thing? Okay. Um, I'm fine crazy. with the 25th. It was very suspicious that the stream stats software mm -hmm. stopped and didn't include any catchment area in Rhode Island. So our question was, does it go across state lines? Because if it does, it would expand the catchment area and it would be possible uh, that it would be considered uh, a perennial stream. But there's a great big plaza there so that storm water is captured on site and managed in Rhode Island. So it is a straight line. And to prove their point, they found 
uh, a stream stop calculation that was done in Rhode Island, where the catchment area was in Massachusetts, and they use that as an example. So, yes, that was your only question on the 25th? Yeah, everything else was great. Awesome. Me. September 22nd. I was not present, so I looked it over and it seems, uh, I think everything looked good to me. Uh, I didn't think I had any questions or. Um, yeah, no, it was a pretty sharp meeting, I think. Yeah, it was kind of like tonight. Yeah. 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 All right. And then the last one was October 13th. Um, one minor request for an addition that is, I was present at that meeting on, and apparently I made some motions and stuff, but <laughs> not listed as being present in the beginning. Probably because I wasn't at the meeting before that because I was out of town. So, no, you were, um, yep, present at the meeting. You were, you were there. I remember. I guess, we'll include you, Mike. I guess I'll have to add you. <laughs> See, I thought that this was a subtle attempt. If I'm not included, then I'll just have nothing to say. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you could catch it. Oh, we can, we can dream, can't we, Mike? <laughs> I know you were hoping, <laughs> Neil. We used to call those. We used to call those things the hook. <laughs> the hook. We would occasionally make a, an error, intentional, intentional, to see if someone would catch it. <laughs> then we knew people were reading the minutes. And we used to call those as readers of the minutes. Oh, sure. Like, yeah, you put the hook in there. Oh, sure, you did. Um, uh, page four. Um, First uh, paragraph, major paragraph there, uh, like third line, there was also the addition of a pungal pool. I like that word. I would like to recommend we add that to the dictionary. Or you could do plunge, whatever. Um, Got it. And, uh, and what is uh, this? This is also in the same section there, a question more than a you know correction. There was no evaluation of vapor intrusion. We were talking about the plants in the uh, next to the middle school there in that uh, uh, basin. Um, no, that was they... my question. Arian asked that question. Oh, into the into the building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It had like um, a potential for vapor intrusion in terms of like how close the they were to um, the foundation. Right. Yeah. Okay, I, my suggestion would be just maybe expand on it slightly because if I was reading that, I had no idea what we were talking about and um, thinking maybe we're worried the about the kids vaping on site or something like that. Um, so maybe just, just say into the building. Yeah, that's fine. I think that would be clear enough. That's great. Um, uh, uh, just a spelling thing on uh, page uh, blah, 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 five, uh, second paragraph, first section about 148 Depot Street. Last sentence yeah. there, permittables got two T's, I think. Um, and page six, just in the first paragraph, first line, a site plan was shown to be share screen. I think it's show, shown on via share screen or on share screen, whatever. And I think that's it. I'm good. Pick it on. On, whatever. Yeah, okay. Thank you, me. Mike. Thank you, Amy. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the 25th, 22nd, and 13th as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a unanimous vote. Um, motion to adjourn. Very good. Come on. Brian, go for it. Come on, Brian, second it. You can do it, Brian, come on. <laughs> he just refuses to leave. Brian wants to stay. I think we should. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll second that in a This wheel. has got to be a record. Yeah, I don't know what to do with my spare time. It's not even 8 o'clock. Jeez, I feel bad if we get out of here this early. <laughs> not really. <laughs> well, Shock everybody else in the house, walk back we in. We accomplished all of this in about the same amount of time it takes to play one inning in the major league. World <laughs> hey, uh, are you a fan of either team, Cliff? No, I kind of lost my love for baseball. Okay. <laughs> I, apparently, something was done last night that, or the first game that had never been done in the history of the World Series. First backdrop, first pitch hits a home run. Yeah. So I pitched 
guys struck out two batters with a broken leg too. Yeah, I heard about that. I didn't see any of the game, but I heard about that. I was like, wow, that's the old bloody sock for uh, what's his name, uh, Kurt Schilling. Yeah. A little more dramatic. 